I miss using all my older tools and supplies like mist, paint and plain chipboard. I know styles change, but I have so much older stuff. It would make me feel better to mix my new and old supplies more frequently. Glitter Girl, can you help? Of course I can. Today I'm going to break it down into a few different top tips to help you use your old supplies and your new ones together in, in a way that will help you feel good about your stash and love your pages at the same time. My first big step is to say, if you have supplies that are a surplus to you, that they're giving you guilt because you spent money on them 5, 10, 15 years ago, or even last week, if there's something that doesn't inspire you, but yet you keep holding on to it because of some sense of obligation, it's time to set it free. And what I find is that if you can find a place where you can give your surplus supplies to somebody else that will make you feel good, then you won't have any guilt about going and giving them away. Um, I send my extra, a lot of my extra supplies to a children's hospital, and I know that it helps them with a lot of different projects as they work on, and I feel great that I can pass on something that I have lots of, paper and stickers and things like that, to a group of kids that, that need some extra help. And that just happened, I happened upon somebody who, who did that sort of work, and now I feel great whenever I can call her and say, I have lots of boxes, would you like to come get them? Find something that helps you turn your guilt over keeping lots of supplies into happiness. So that's big tip number one. So I have very little in terms of supplies that I don't like. I try to only have things that I love. It means that one of the examples in your question was um, plain chipboard. Plain chipboard, by and large, does not inspire me. So I only have very little of it left, and the things I have left are um, these small little hearts, and I also have some small little butterflies from Jenny Bola, and those I still like because I find there are lots of different ways that I can use them, but I don't have buckets and buckets of different kinds of plain chipboard, even though I once owned them and didn't use them. I passed them on, and it made me feel better. Okay, so step two is to choose one or two, maybe three, of those things that you want to use more often. And don't try to do the whole lot at once. Just choose one, two, or three and place them on your desk. Place them somewhere where you will see them rather than you have to go hunting for them halfway through the layout. So I've chosen three things. These chipboard hearts, some embossing powder, and some acrylic paint, because that was also in your question. So. I am not going to go running for other old supplies halfway through. I've decided these are the three things that I'm going to make an effort to use and I'm putting them on my desk where I can see them. Okay, so from there I'm going to walk you through a layout using those three things. And I started with my photos and then went to my paper. And my papers are all new. I wanted to pick up on um, the red pattern here, the red and white. I also wanted some of this turquoise color from his trousers, and I like the idea of maybe picking up on a gray or a white from the background and his top. So I have some paper here with the turquoise. That's from Dear Lizzie Documentary, and so is this one with the ampersand. And then this red and white crosshatch, because at first I thought maybe I should keep looking for red and white bold stripes. I couldn't think of any straight away that I knew I had. And I actually, when I put the red and white stripe next to the crosshatch, I like the fact that it's a different pattern with the same colors, so that they, the two are different entities. They're not going to run together. But most importantly, I love that concept of if I find something and it's going to work, I don't keep looking. I stop. Why would I spend another hour looking for a piece of paper I may or may not own that may or may not be better than this one when I could use that hour to craft? So I'm using this crosshatch. This is from Dear Lizzie Happy Place. That's the new Lizzie collection. And then I pulled out this gray and cream print, which is from Starshine. This one's going to be my background. I have two four by six photos. And you know I often like to stack them up like this, but because this one runs off one edge and this one runs off the other edge, I don't think they look particularly awesome stacked. Instead, I'm going to use them side by side. I think I'm going to use them this way because there's a bit more action as if you were thinking of reading a story. Think of it like a picture book. So this one is the calm and this one is the big punchline or this is the big 
the big moment of the story. So I'm going to use them like that and then I'm going to use these other colors to create some strips and then I have some things for my embellishment ready to go. To get everything started I've cut a variety of sizes of strips of those papers and I've also collected two branding strips. This one is the, the red from the bottom of that gray and then this was one that was sitting on my desk from a previous project but happened to be the right colors. So I've added those into the mix and I can adhere my photos and then build those borders around them. I have one that's bigger than the rest, so that's going to go up here, and then I can layer some others on top of it. Yep, and I think that's that's as good of order as any. I was just looking if maybe I want to swap and have this turquoise and then the red and then the turquoise so that those two are broken up a little bit and I think that's okay. Alright, so remember I have this on my desk. I want to make sure I use it. So before I do anything else I'm going to go ahead and paint that top edge and the very bottom edge with my acrylic paint. Now if acrylic paint is something that you have a lot of in your stash, please go ahead and have a look at it and keep an eye on it because acrylic paint is one of the supplies that can go bad or go off and it won't be any good to you anymore. And if you have a giant collection and it's sitting in a box and it's getting dry and old and horrible and you can't paint with it anymore, you're, ha you're paying rent on a giant box of supplies that are no good to anyone. So keep an eye on it and make sure you can still use it. There are a million different things you'll be able to find that, you know, even in a box of all different acrylic paints, some will be good and some won't because, um, you know, the, the lids are, are different and um, the humidity in your room may be different from one person to the next, so what works for me in terms of the lids that are really, really effective is great, and what works for someone else is not, because they live in the desert. Yeah, <laughs> all these different things, the temperature, the humidity, all just really, really different ways, but really, really simple things that can make acrylic paint not so useful. Okay, so this one, um, this is a, an old bottle of paint, and it's not perfect. It is quite thick, but it is certainly usable. And what I'm going to do is to use that to my advantage. So it's quite thick. Okay, I'll use it on an edge where I can paint it on quite thickly and let it have some texture. Now, maybe not that thick, but you can see it's a bit more like paste now. So I might as well use the textured an element in that. So I'm going to paint the top and the bottom edge with my acrylic paint and then I'm going to let it dry and keep all that texture. And while it dries I'm going to make sure that I get all that um, paint out of my brush so that I don't ruin that and then I get my acrylic paint um, all sealed up nice and tight so that it doesn't get any worse. Once my paint's dry, then I'm ready to piece this all together. I'm going to use a mix of that painted edge plus some gray ink to make everything coordinate. I'm just trying to see here how high I want to move that one because I'm going to add those other layers below this one. And then my gray ink on the rest of these edges. Just looking at the pattern here because I want to make sure that I move it down enough that I can still tell what that pattern is. And then I have this Oh, I've put these in the wrong order. 
left. Okay, so pull that red up and put the turquoise first. Put just about the same spot. Then the red, then my turquoise strip. And the turquoise stripe is the only one that I need both edges inked because the rest all overlap so you only see the top edge. But this little one, you're going to see both edges. Now, this also has a little tear in it, um, just from when I was cutting the other paper and it's ended up a little imperfect. But I think I can work with it. I'm going to put the glue there and see how much you can still tell when I put it down and if, if it's really obvious then I will um, add some embellishment there and figure out a way to make the embellishment work in that sort of space. I just realized it was a bit too much of the, the pattern from the rest of the paper there and it was a little too obvious. Okay, let's see how well I can stick that tear back together. That nice and square against the edge and the top edge of these photos. It's not too bad. It is there though, that little tear. Okay, then I'm going to repeat that same process down here with my painted edge at the bottom. There's quite a lot already going on on this page even though all I've added is pen and paper. So time for me to think about the embellishment and make sure that it's not going to be too crazy to allow um, for my story to be told as well. This is the reverse of that turquoise sheet and I like the idea of including some of the red that's here and then also maybe this turquoise uh, circle with the stars and maybe the gray one here or this happy that has a little bit of red in it as well. I'd need to place this one going off the edge of the page but I think that might work. So I'm going to cut those two out and then I'm going to look next at my um, my chipboard pieces and what I can do to make them work with the sorts of styled embellishments that I do today even though they've been in my stash for a long time. I'm thinking with the plain chipboard I could use it with my embossing powder to create some metallic hearts rather than just plain. Of course I could paint them with the the red paint but that's going to be the same sort of um, matte finish and I'd rather have something a bit more sparkly. So I'm going to take five hearts because if these have been in my stash so long I don't need to, to try and be really really careful and keep just keep using just one at a time. Using five is absolutely fine. And I'm going to use my silver embossing powder and some Versamark ink to make these embellishments. I'm just going to put some scrap paper underneath so that it'll be easy for me to get rid of the powder. Then each of these are going to go onto the Versamark ink. Versamark's really sticky so your embossing powder will stick to it nicely. And I'm going to cover them with the silver, uh, silver embossing powder. Then heat set that with the heat tool, and it will go nice, shiny silver enamel look, rather than the plain chipboard. And of course, I can tip all of this powder back in before I heat these up. So my embossing powder stays in my stash because it lasts for ages. I have some embossing powders that I've had since I first started stamping anything and they still work fine. Most of them hold up really well over time. After one coat of embossing powder, with most powders, they're going to have this sort of dimpled um, textured look. So I'm going to show you, show you what one of them looks like if I do a second coat. And if you're very quick and you're doing one at a time, you don't actually have to ink in between. You can just dunk it right back into the embossing powder while it's still hot. But if you are taking a little break in between, 
then you'll need to add more ink. So if I just cover that one with a second layer and heat it up. Then you can see the difference side by side in how the second layer ends up really, really smooth and that first layer is quite mottled. So I'm going to go ahead and do two coats on all of these. I have three paper circles and five chipboard hearts that have now been embossed. So I've also used all the things on my um, list that I started with at the beginning, provided they make it onto the layout now. I think this is a good time before I put the embellishment on for me to go ahead and place my title and my journaling so that I know that that is going to have room. I'm going to use a Project Life card and that's quite simple. This is from the Polka Dot Party mini kit which looks like this, which has been out for a while now. It's uh, not new by any means. And it just it's a gridded card and has that same tone from the background here, and that turquoise is a good match as well. Then I'm going to use silver glitter thickers for my title in the Fitzgerald font so that that will match with the silver of the hearts. So now where to put it all? I'm thinking maybe this could be tucked up here and my title could run along here and then that gives me some room for embellishment maybe here, here, and here which I think would work well because I have this one that needs to go off the edge so I could do some embellishment in this grouping here I can have some embellishment that's going to be right next to the journaling and that could include the red to, to contrast against the turquoise here and that one has a date so I can and use that with the journaling and then that means that my star is going to come down here they're all going to have at least one heart and I have two extras to add in so it's a good start okay I think that will work so I'll go ahead and adhere my journaling card and lay down my title get my words all in place and then I can do my embellishing story about all of this little spot and its importance all in place so now I can embellish without any worry of running out of room to get all that journaled. So this one's going to come over here and I think it'll be best if I run it underneath there but not quite to the edge. So I have my little shot of red there. I'm going to have a shot of turquoise down here about a third of the way in or down from the end of my title. And then this one's going to run off the edge of the page. And I'm just looking. It could go up here, but I'm thinking it would be a little nicer to bring it down. Then I'm going to start with one heart for each grouping. And in fact, I'm going to cover up where it says date, perhaps. Mm, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll run it down here. And then I think I could run this, this heart on the, either side, but if I'm following the title, then if I move my heart to this side, that's in line with his face in the photo. So little things like that help to bring your attention because I think the best part of this page is this particular photo. Although I love this one too. I like this one and it says a lot about his personality so um, it's nice to have not only a frame that encircles this photo but something that really directs your eye um, without you knowing it. It's not like a giant arrow that points to his face but there are a lot of things going on there that help um, bring your, your eye there. Now I know I have two more hearts that I want to include. I also would like some horizontal elements with these groupings, especially this one. So I think it's good to have some horizontal phrase stickers like this. I could bring some red in as well, maybe group the hearts a bit. And 
just tuck this one underneath here so that it, it's tucked away but it's still legible. There we go. Haven't added a horizontal element up here, but there is quite a lot of horizontal going on in that um, in that circle anyway. So I think I'm okay there. I also wouldn't mind bringing in something like some tape. I wonder if this is too much turquoise now. Is there such a thing as too much turquoise? Hmm, I'm not convinced. Maybe if I run it like that. And I definitely need this on this one. Maybe I need to run it underneath the heart. Okay, then I can look at where these two other hearts might look nice. I can admit defeat and just include three, and I can have these two left on my desk. I think that's what I'm going to do, because I think if I put any more on, um, I might be able to work, like, something like this could work, having, having that one point in between the and story. But then I have four... And I think the fifth one is too much. So, okay. Three, and then the other two will stay on my desk so that hopefully I use them in my very next project and don't feel like I have failed in my, my mission to use older stuff that I haven't been using every day. I need to add my date up there. And I think I need something with a little bit of different texture to go on top of the washi tape. And then I think it's done. Here it is. And this... I think this actually qualifies as something that I haven't used lately either. And that is these little pearl adhesive dots. So they're a bit like enamel dots, but they are little pearls instead of the enamel material. Almost done. I need the date. And this needs something here that can't be one of those hearts. I think this would be a great place for me to have like a little die cut phrase or something. So I'm just going to have a quick look for that. Okay, I found that last finishing touch. It's a silver sticker from my True Stories sticker book. And I'm just going to put that on pop dots. Add that in the middle. So now I have this little triangle of this the three silver hearts. But I also kind of have a little mm, funky round <laughs> quadrilateral maybe type shape anyway it encircles or frames the photos in the middle with all the different silvers and um, and I like that although there's a lot going on the photos are still really clear in the middle and most importantly I got out those things at the beginning that I knew I wanted to challenge myself to use and I put them to use in a way that I like with my new papers and and the style that I'm using right now so to me that really helps me use my old and my new supplies together I'd love to see how you put your old and new supplies together and I'd also love to hear from you if you have any questions or challenges that you'd like to see answered in a further adventure you can leave them in the comments here or you can join our Facebook group scrapbook like a superhero. And of course, you can see more at shamel.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.